So once the structure of DNA was discovered, search for genes became red hot and people started to ask questions that whether brown color is a dominant trait or a blue color or is there a one gene which controls this eye color or there are multiple genes. So people started to get into this debate, not only scientists but also mainstream media and people started to discuss whether their children, if they, whether their children are going to have curly hair or straight hair. Um, now we know that if, if a person has round hair follicles, they are going to have straight hair. Pretty much the way most of the Asian communities, when I say Asian, I mean Chinese or Japanese, they have round hair follicles, therefore they have straight hair. Or when we are talking about if they have flattened or C-shaped follicles, then usually they get curly hair. And if they have oval hair follicles, they get wavy hair. So people started to discuss that how genes basically control your basic traits. And we start, people started to identify that some traits are continuous. For example, we, are, we were just discussing about hair genes and the, it's a continuous trait. So you can have a range. So for example, African population have very curly hair and uh, then some people have less curly hair. So basically then ultimately people started to discuss, okay, there must be two or three copies of the gene which must be controlling this sort of variation. But ultimately we did found uh, some traits which were pretty much controlled by one particular gene. For example, you are watching a picture here of a boy rolling rolling his uh, tongue and actually tongue rolling is pretty much a dominant gene so some people can roll some people cannot but also we have seen there are instances that some people can not roll their tongue but ultimately they can learn to roll their tongue so there can be some environmental factors involved as well now these questions ultimately clicked the basic biotech research. I want to give you one more example here, freckles. Freckles are also controlled primarily by a single gene known as MC1R. So the question became like, can we control the traits? Can we isolate the genes? Can we edit the genes? Can we introduce them in new species? So for example, if you don't have a trait, can we introduce that trait into a particular species? If I cannot do something, ya mere mein kisi ek trait ki kami hai, so can I acquire that by biotechnology? The major breakthrough in biotech research came from the came from the discovery of restriction endonucleases. Prior to that, we were at the stage that we knew that this is DNA, this is the sequence of DNA, but can we cut it? Can we basically find a gene and pick that gene and put it at a place by our own choice? So three scientists, Herbert Boyer, Stanley Norman Cohen and Paul Berg, basically found restriction endonucleases and kick-started biotech revolution. So what restriction endonucleases do? They basically cut the DNA. And if you can cut the DNA, then basically you can pick a gene of your choice and you can insert it. And in 1973, uh, Herbert Boyer met Stanley Cohen at a conference. And what they did was Boyer, Boyer brought restriction enzymes. Cohen contributed with a plasmid, a plasmid which had tetracycline resistance. Uh, plasmids are extra circular, uh, basically, Plasmids are extra chromosomal DNA floating in the cytoplasm of a bacterium. They replicate independently of the chromosome. So basically, in nature, they have various functions. But in genetic engineering, we have been using them to give antibiotic resistance to various strains so that ultimately we can isolate those strains and we can use them. Um, so Cohen contributed with uh, plasmid PSC101 and they basically introduced 
a gene from African clawed frog into a bacterium. So this was the first major breakthrough where gene of another species was cloned into a bacterium. But all this new found technology was, uh, it met with sheer criticism. Uh, genetic, so let me quote you something from 1960s from a local politician in Massachusetts. He says, genetic engineering can give rise to something which can crawl out of the laboratory such as Frankenstein. Now Frankenstein is from Shelley's novel, it's, he's a monster which was created by, well actually a Frankenstein monster. Frankenstein is a doctor and who created basically, uh, who assembled this human being who wasn't alive. So basically people started to think that genetic engineering is something what you are doing very ungodly thing or as a monsters create ho jayenge jo monsters basically uh, Allah Taala nahi chahta ke wo bane so ultimately uh, there was a huge negative perception surrounding genetic engineering um, and Hollywood took upon the same thing so movies were made like some of you might have seen Gattaca jaha ek astronaut is a designer baby jisko uske parents ne jaake choose kiya hua hai ki uska ye color hona chahiye aur uski skin aisi honi chahiye uska eye color aisa hona chahiye uska intelligence level ye hona chahiye aur uska ek bhai hai jo basically ek normal human being hai but ultimately wo movie mein ye dikhate hain ki jo genetically ordered tha uska bhai usko surpass kar jata hai aur for example splice which is another movie i have just given an example jo ek aur freak paida hota hai due to a genetic engineering basically mismatch ab a huge negative perception was existing so that that pretty much also made sure ke academia started to use some other word for this revolution in genetic engineering words seemed to be phased out and ultimately biotechnology as a word took over now but there were some people who basically understood the potential and one particular credit goes to this guy who is in the image here, Robert Swenson, who met Boyer and went to make the first real biotech company, uh, Genentech in 1976. And Robert, uh, Robert Swenson was a partner at Kleiner Perkins, Kleiner Perkins Caulfield Buyer and basically they together made history in a way that there is a huge contribution of industry in, in this kick starting this revolution of biotechnology and they were the first, they were the first people to invest in it uh, and they came up with solutions for example they gave the first protein to be cloned in E. coli at an industrial scale was metrostatin which was a growth hormone and they also gave uh, insulin. Prior to that people were taking insulin from bovine sources but then it was the first recombinant human insulin which was made by Genentech but marketed by Eli Lilly. Still you can walk into the store even today in Pakistan or anywhere else in the world and you can take Humulin, which is still marketed by Eli Lilly. 